Right now, as President Biden prepares to deliver tonight's State of the Union address, how Wisconsin could play a part in it. Also, the Milwaukee Police Department mourning the death of one of its officers after a deadly shooting with a robbery suspect. And later, residents of southern Wisconsin are getting two new places to shop for groceries, why it means so much for one community. Thanks for joining us tonight at 6, everyone. Charlotte has the night off. We'll get to those stories in just a bit, but we're beginning with the weather as commuters tonight and tomorrow could find roads to be a little slippery. A storm system heading towards southern Wisconsin could bring a wide variety of precipitation from snow to sleet to freezing rain and an alert day has been declared. Let's check the first one forecast with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? Yeah, this is actually from uh, tomorrow night into Thursday. That's when the uh, greatest potential for winter weather will be. Let's start off by taking a look at the live view from the Platteville Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam. Just a beautiful sunset tonight. We had sunshine all afternoon and temperatures that climbed into the 40s. Madison hit 43 for a high. Janesville hit 40, uh, 45, 41 in Platteville. Even up to the north, temperatures were in the lower 40s as far north as the Dells. And current temperatures are in the middle 30s to lower 30s through much of southern Wisconsin. Those temperatures will fall off pretty quickly tonight because of the clear skies, but still it won't be a bad night. Here in Dane County right now, 30 36 degrees in Belleville, 37 in Oregon, 36 in Cross Plains. Look for skies to remain mostly clear this evening. Be a little colder with temperatures dropping off into the upper 20s by late evening. But we do have an alert day in the forecast for Wednesday night into Thursday. Winter storm watches have already been issued north and west of Dane County from 3 a.m. Thursday morning through 9 p.m. Thursday evening. I'll tell you how much snow will fall, how much ice we can expect, and when it'll all end in just a few minutes. Gary, thank you. You can stay up to date on the weather with our first one forecast weather app, hourly forecast road conditions, the latest radar. You can download it for free in your phone's app store. Just search WISC weather. In a little less than two hours, the president will deliver his State of the Union address. And Wisconsin will be in the spotlight tonight as political reporter Will Keneally explains. Will? So you may hear Dana Branch's name during the president's address tonight. She's a Milwaukee resident and one of the guests that the first lady is bringing to this national address. So the president is highlighting Branch's work to address water lines in Milwaukee, a city that received close to $50 million under last year's large infrastructure bill to replace those pipes. But she's not the only Wisconsinite coming to tonight's speech. Senator Tammy Baldwin is also bringing David Havdi, an Appleton resident who also has diabetes. We're expecting to hear this coincide with a push to lower prescription drug costs. The avoided hospitalizations, the avoided ER visits, the avoided pain and suffering, frankly, um, is, uh, is well worth uh, the, the investment that's being made. So this year, insulin costs for those on Medicare are capped. Hovde says that it used to cost them, for example, hundreds of dollars per month, but with that cap in place, now it's just $35. And in the last few minutes, we actually received some excerpts from tonight's speech. We're expecting the president tonight to say that jobs are coming back, pride is coming back because of the choices that we made in the last two years. We'll also likely hear more from the president tomorrow when he comes to the Madison area on the issue of jobs in the economy. Reporting from the Capitol, Will Keneally, News 3 Now. Will, thank you, Anna. As Will just mentioned, President Biden will be visiting Madison tomorrow. The White House has not publicly disclosed the details of the president's itinerary, but he is scheduled to arrive at the Dane County Regional Airport. Stay with News 3 for live coverage of President Biden's visit on the air and streaming online at channel3000.com and channel3000+. We have an update to the woman who died in a Rock County jail cell last week. The county's medical examiner released the woman's identity today, 29-year-old Nicole Lemke of Janesville was pronounced dead at the scene on Thursday. Correctional officers were conducting routine security checks when they found her lying on the floor of her cell. The cause and manner of death have not been released. The Sauk County Sheriff's Office again asking the public for information related to a 2020 murder at Devil's Lake State Park. 24-year-old John Schmutzer was found dead at Devil's Lake State Park in October of that year. Authorities believe he was attacked randomly and was blindsided as he hiked alone. Information on the case can also be relayed to the Crime Stoppers line. That number is 
847-7285. To Milwaukee now, where police there are mourning the death of an officer who was shot and killed this morning. It happened around 1 in the morning when police attempted to arrest a 19-year-old suspect in connection with a robbery. When chasing the suspect, one of the officers caught up to him and a struggle ensued. Gunfire was exchanged between the officer and the suspect. The officer was taken to the hospital where he later died. Milwaukee Police Chief Jeffrey Norman is asking for the community's prayers and support. This is a time to lean in and do the work that needs to be done in our community. The violence needs to stop. The violence needs to stop. Everyone has a role in community protection. The 19-year-old suspect was pronounced dead at the scene. It is unknown if the suspect died from self-infliction or from the officer's gunfire. Governor Evers released a statement on the officer's death. It reads in part, Kathy and I are praying for the officer's family, colleagues, the department, and the entire city of Milwaukee mourning yet another tragic loss due to gun violence. Madison police say an accidental shooting was the reason behind a large police presence near Jefferson Middle school and Memorial High School last Friday. A 19-year-old man and three other people were sitting in a vehicle when he accidentally shot himself. When police got to the scene, a crowd had formed. One person was taken into custody for allegedly trying to interfere with a criminal investigation. Police say the gun used in the incident was not recovered. Anyone with information on that shooting is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. More opportunities for people to get fresh produce became available in two places in southern Wisconsin today. A, lar a large high V stores in Janesville and Oregon opened their doors this morning. But for one of these communities, our Catherine Merck shows us this is more than just a grand opening for a much needed store. Catherine? This is a map of Oregon. There aren't many places for people to shop for groceries in the area, and specifically in this town of over 11,000 people. This new high V location today replaced their legacy grocery store that supported the community for years. Today, I spoke with the Chamber of Commerce for the village of Oregon about how that grocery store location is important for the area. A large selection and variety of produce throughout the store. In both Janesville and Oregon. Welcome everybody in here. Good morning, folks. Customers could take their pick of fresh produce for the first time at these new stores. Just really glad that it's here. For customers like Susan Butchin in Janesville, the grand opening of these two stores is bringing something to these communities that everyone seems to talk about. Everybody's like, oh, I can't wait till Facebook's posted with it and family talking about it. And so I wanted to come and see what it looked like. For the Oregon location, needing a grocery store isn't a green idea. They're really the only grocery store around other than Quick Trips uh, here in Oregon, um, basically until you get to, like, Fitchburg or Stoughton. Tanner Brereton is with the Oregon Chamber of Commerce. He explained how after Bill's Food Center decided to sell its store, this community was in need of a store to replace its only grocery option. It's critical because, like, without that, we would decidedly be a food desert. So, and uh, actually a good chunk of Oregon is a food desert. Welcome to IUV. For customers like Susan Butchin, she's mostly focused on getting her family the best deals on the things she needs. I love it. I'll be back again. But for the community as a whole, the impact goes far beyond these aisles. I think Hy-Vee will bring what it brings to all the communities that they're in. Uh, good quality produce, good deals. Hi. Good morning. A neighborhood local grocery store that people can rely on. With the opening of these two stores, High V will have eight grocery store locations in Wisconsin, including two in Madison and one also in Fishburg. Catherine, thank you. When we come back, a group of lawmakers is looking to help financially vulnerable people with their medical bills. And the primary for the spring election is a couple of weeks away, but you can now cast your ballot. We well, you need to know if you want to vote early. Rest comfortably with brands you can trust at Wanaki Furniture ETC. Create a unique and stylish room with made-in-the-USA products from companies like Smith Brothers of Burn. Select from a wide variety of sofas at a great price. Bring quality home at Wanaki Furniture ETC. Do you feel stuck living in a cold and drafty home? Well, there's a better solution than just turning up the heat. 
Because heating your home is by far the most expensive part of your energy bills. At USA Insulation, we fix cold homes. Most houses are built with builder's grade insulation. So when we fill your walls with our high efficiency foam, your house stays warm without turning up the heat, which saves you a lot of money. So call now and save up to 30% with the brand new energy credit. USA Insulation. Wisconsin. It's easy to take for granted how we warm up. But what if you couldn't warm up so easily? For many, it's a reality they can't ignore. Working families, elderly, disabled, and veterans struggling to keep their heat and power on in the dangerous cold of winter. If you or someone you know needs a hand up, our energy, water, and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safe in your home. No one deserves to suffer when we can help each other. Sir Jennian's 93-year history means you pay $93 for installation no matter how many rooms you carpet. Get carpet and pad in your old carpet removed and recycled. Our competitors can't match it. Ask about 12-month financing. Local, sustainable Sir Jennian's. The local water experts at Culligan can take care of... Everything but the kitchen sink. Actually, we do that too. Culligan, here for every water worry. Experience handcrafted and hand-finished furniture by genuine Amish craftsmen at Wanaki Furniture ETC. Featuring hardwood made in the USA home furnishings by Simply Amish and other great brands you can trust. Bring quality home at Wanaki Furniture ETC. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. In-person absentee voting is underway for the February primary here in Wisconsin. It'll determine who moves on to the April ballot in the spring election, including candidates for state Supreme Court. Anyone with a valid ID can vote early. You don't need to provide a reason for doing so. If you need to register to vote or update your voting address, just make sure you bring proof of residency for your current address with you to the polls. We saw our absentee numbers balloon a lot with the pandemic. Uh, we've seen that come down some, and uh, people are trending more towards either the in-person absentee voting like this or coming to their polling place on election day. And for a full list of early voting locations and dates here in Madison, just head to the story at channel3000.com. For early voting, you do not have to go to a specific location to cast your ballot. You can also find more information on voting early on the City of Madison's website. If you have trouble coming up with the money for co-pays when you go in for medical treatment, a bipartisan group of lawmakers wants to help. They want to introduce a bill that would bring much needed relief to financially vulnerable patients by ensuring that all all payments, whether they come directly out of pocket or with the help of a copay assistance, count toward their out of pocket costs. This is about making sure that people can afford their medications and not have to choose between groceries and gas. Um, to me, this policy is a no-brainer. This is common sense. This is one of the easiest things that we can do to help patients at the pharmacy counter afford their prescriptions. The All Copays Count Coalition comprises more than 80 national nonprofits, patient advocacy, and provider organizations representing millions of people living with serious, complex, and chronic illnesses. Still ahead, looking back at some of Madison's most iconic black figures. Coming up next, we continue our coverage of Black History Month by talking with Madison's NAACP president on how these historic trailblazers helped make Madison the city it is today. Plus, a storm system heading our way could make roads a little slippery. Gary's back with a complete forecast after the break. Frito-Lay party size snacks for just $1.99. Wednesday only at hy V. That's right, your daily deal for Wednesday is Frito-Lay party size snacks for just $1.99. While supplies last, only at hy V. This President's Day, we're throwing a five-star celebration at Bob's Discount Furniture, making it super easy to shop my top-rated products, like my Adventure and Forte collections. Both have power reclining Bobapedic seats, USB ports, a drop-down table in the sofa, luxurious upholstery, and a storage console in the love seat. Just $9.99 each. And the reviews are flying in with two and a half thousand and counting. So check out the Avenger and Forte motion collections this President's Day weekend at Bob's. This year, say yes. I can 
be more thrilled with my results. I'm over the moon happy. Look at that waist. Yes to confidence. I'm so happy I just put this dress on that I haven't worn in over 10 years. Yes to a new shape. These are my results. I am so happy. Yes to a new you. I'm Dr. Elena Vega. Imagine you could remove this much fat from multiple areas all at one time. Sono Bellows board certified surgeons use micro laser technology to safely target and remove your diet resistant fat cells for good. I have the flattest tummy that I've had in 25 years. I'm able to wear things that I never thought I would wear again. I can wear a little black dress. I feel sexy. Find out how you can get $250 off with our New Year exclusive offer. Call 1-800-993-0752 or go to sonobello.com. Wondering about remodeling? Fry Construction's interior design team is ready. Whether a refreshing facelift or a major renewal, your project deserves only the very best. And that's exactly what you get with Fry Interiors. We brought remodeling dreams to life for the folks who voted us Best of Madison's Best Kitchen and Bath Design. Ready to join them? Ready to get more comfortable? Ready for the best? From design through construction and after, we're with you every step of the way. Your next remodel starts at FryConstruction.com. Get Frito-Lay Party Size Snacks for just $1.99. Wednesday only at hy V. That's right, your daily deal for Wednesday is Frito-Lay Party Size Snacks for just $1.99. While supplies last, only at hy V. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. February is Black History Month, and each week, News 3 Now is highlighting the rich black history in South Central Wisconsin. Last week, our Andrew Banstra showed an underground railroad site in Milton. Today, he spoke with Madison's NAACP president about Madison's black icons and trailblazers. Andrew? Yeah, that's right. Vel Phillips, Francis Huntley Cooper, Greg Jones, those are just a couple of names that trailblaze Southwest Wisconsin's black history. They'd all tell you, though, that remembering the past fuels the future. We learn the lesson today of the history of the past, but we also promote the history of the future by putting it in its proper context. Black history is American history. That's the message Greg Jones, the president of Dane County's NAACP, is sharing. Fel Phillips is an embodiment of that. She is a known icon. She was the first black woman to graduate from UW-Madison Law School, the state's first black judge, and was key in the fight for fair housing to protect minorities from discrimination. In 1979, she became the state's first black secretary of state, and how she was elected, Greg says, is key to black history. The name Vail. Most people in northern Wisconsin, northwest Wisconsin, thought it was a male. So just the fact that her name and face hadn't been connected together opened up a lot of doors for her and ultimately played a role in, I think, opening up the consciousness of the electorate in Wisconsin. But once they knew what Phillips was about... Once they met her, knew her, they knew that she was an advocate for rights for everyone. In 1991, Frances Huntley Cooper was elected mayor of Fitchburg, the first black mayor in the state of Wisconsin. Greg says she did that through dedication to her community. But also being locally involved in the, in the communities. That is what opened up the eyes of people who, who voted for. So no, so that was a historic moment. Greg himself, among other roles, served as Fitchburg's chair of police and fire commission. People like Greg, Francis, and Vell trailblazed by remembering the past and fighting for the future. What we need to do with it is carry it forward. We can't let it be forgotten. Phillips amplified her message by mentoring athletes like Hank Aaron when he played in Milwaukee. And of course, her name is now on one of Madison's high schools. Andrew, thank you. An alert day for some snow, sleet, maybe some freezing rain is in the forecast for tomorrow night. Here's Gary with the very latest. Gary? Yeah, it looks like the worst of it will be later tomorrow night into the day on Thursday. Uh, we have that alert day in the forecast. We've had it in. We put it in yesterday because of the potential for the storm. It's looking a little more likely now. Right now, we're thinking a pretty wide range of snowfall amounts, maybe an inch down toward the Illinois state line where precipitation will be in the form of rain, changing to snow later on, and then uh, lesser snow after that, to maybe as much as eight inches or even a little bit more north and west of Dane County in a narrow band. I'll show you where that will be. But there also could be a little bit of freezing rain or sleet mixed in at times, mainly later tomorrow night. Uh, by Thursday, it'll change over mainly to snow. So uh, this is kind of what we're thinking as, as far as the snow is concerned. A narrow band of 
about six inches or more of snow from around Prairie du Chien over toward Richland Center, up toward the Dells, and then up into central Wisconsin. Now, this band could shift north or southward a little bit. If it's a little colder, it would shift a little bit south, uh, a little more south, and maybe expand a little bit into the Madison area. If it's a little warmer, this band might shrink and either be gone altogether or just kind of uh, be up toward the Dells, where temperatures will be a little bit warmer in, into Madison. The farther south you go, Precipitation will start out in the form of rain and then change over to snow, but the heavier snow will probably lasts for a lesser time. So down toward the Illinois state line, maybe around an inch of snow, the farther north and west you go, that's the back edge of the storm. So again, it's that trying to figure out exactly where that heavier band of snow will end up. But right now it's likely to be in that area. There also could be some sleet or freezing rain for a time. I think that'll mainly be about a three to four hour period after maybe 3 a.m. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, but early by Thursday morning, it will change over to mainly snow and you can see now the uh, future track computer models showing just less than a tenth of an inch of uh, freezing rain most areas just a couple one hundredths of an inch so it's not as much of a concern as it was yesterday but we are looking at a winter storm watch beginning at 3 a.m. to on uh, Thursday morning through 9 p.m. Thursday evening north and west of Dane County so it doesn't include Madison but it does include La Crosse and areas out to the west for tomorrow Nice day, partly sunny, mild, high 42. Doesn't show like, or it doesn't look like we're going to see a, a big storm. But as we look at future track beginning Wednesday night at 10 p.m., cloudy skies, temperatures right around or just above freezing to the south of Madison, right around freezing to the north. So again, that's going to make a big difference as far as precipitation types. Be warm enough for mainly rain to the south, but that will start to mix with some light freezing rain or light sleep, where temperatures are at or slightly below freezing. That's more likely north and west of Madison. And then again, we're seeing that change over to mainly snow by mid-morning on Thursday. So even though temperatures might be a little bit above freezing, still enough for snow, a couple degrees more, and you're seeing mainly rain, especially down towards Janesville and southeastern Wisconsin. So that's why the snow amounts will be limited there. But as we see that snow continuing to head northward, noon, everybody's seeing snow, and then it kind of winds down, and by late afternoon, probably down to just some scattered flurries. Most of the accumulating snow will be over with, again, six inches or more in a narrow band north and west of Dane County, maybe three to six inches down toward Madison and lesser amounts to the south and farther to the north and west. Seven to ten day forecast. 29 on Friday with just some snow showers or flurries, but then we see another warm up over the weekend. And by early next week, temperatures are back in the 40s with mainly rain on Valentine's Day afternoon into Wednesday morning. And then again Thursday, changing to some flurries on Friday as we turn colder at the end of the week. Gary, thank you. And we are just a few days away from the start of the 2023 sturgeon spearing season. On February 11th, spearers will get the chance to harvest Wisconsin's largest and oldest fish species. It could be a good harvest this year. That's according to the DNR. One of the biggest predictors for a successful season is water clarity. The DNR says the water clarity on Winnebago is about 13 feet. This year, over 13,000 people bought a spearing license. This is actually an increase from over 12,000 in 2022. So lots of people are probably planning on taking to the ice on Saturday. We're really excited about that. Spearing season will run a maximum of 16 days or until any of the predetermined harvest caps have been met. This year, the cap for young females is 350, adult females 793, and for males, cap 1,231. New week, same big question for Aaron Rodgers. What's next? He gives some is insight as to what he plans to do in the coming weeks. That's next in sports. News 3 Now, first warm weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. A former prosecutor, now circuit court judge, Janet Protasewicz. On the Supreme Court, she'll be a common sense judge. She believes in abortion rights, fairness for all, and protecting public safety. Janet Protasewicz for Supreme Court. This is the house that angels built. Attic Angels Senior Living Community is built on a foundation of authentic, local care. A framework for living well. Windows to take in the beautiful future. And is crowned by the pride that one's home is one's castle. This is the house that angels built. Attic Angel Community. Independent homes and four levels of assisted living. Built with the help of angels. Are you a T-Mobile customer in Wisconsin? Recently, T-Mobile disclosed that 37 million customer accounts were hacked, putting your personal information at risk. Don't let identity theft ruin your credit score and cost you thousands of dollars. Call Lawton and Gates for a free consultation and learn your rights. Wisconsin. It's easy to take for granted how we warm up. 
But what if you couldn't warm up so easily? For many, it's a reality they can't ignore. Working families, elderly, disabled, and veterans struggling to keep their heat and power on in the dangerous cold of winter. If you or someone you know needs a hand up, our energy, water, and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safe in your home. No one deserves to suffer when we can help each other. McGann Furniture and Flooring has a question for you. Do you have a hard time sleeping comfortably through the night? Is your mattress 10 years old or even older? Chances are you're due for a new one. Mattress technology has changed a lot in the last 10 years. Our experienced staff will help you find the right style, construction, and firmness that will give you years of sleeping comfort. And remember, we don't raise prices only to lower them later for a sale. With delivery and disposal of your old set, we make it easy to have the bed of your dreams at McGann Furniture and Flooring, downtown Baraboo. I'm going for Judge Janet Protas. Janet Protasiewicz? <laughs> you don't need to know how to say Protasiewicz to know that Judge Janet believes in abortion rights, fairness, and public safety. Protasiewicz. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, we set the stage for President Biden's arrival in Dane County. We'll begin our extensive team coverage for what's expected to be a busy day. And we're tracking a storm system coming in from the south, a mixture of some rain and snow. An update tomorrow morning between 4.30 and 7.00. closer to making a decision on his future, but not before he heads out on a darkness retreat. Number 12 dished on the Pat McAfee show earlier today about a four day retreat in which he'll be in total darkness and complete isolation. And then after his retreat ends, he hopes to have a final decision on what he's going to do next. Is that going to be suiting up in the green and gold, playing with another team, or possibly hanging up the cleats permanently? That's yeah, a real thing, 100%. And that's why I think it's going to be important um, to get through this week and then, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to take my, uh, you know, my isolation retreat and just to be able to contemplate all things uh, my future and then, uh, and then make a decision that I feel like is, is best for me moving forward and in the highest interest of my happiness and then, uh, and then move forward. And just like that, the regular season for college hockey is almost over. Badger women have just two series left on the schedule. Up first, another epic showdown with Minnesota. Round two of the border battle is this weekend. Now, back in November, when these powerhouse programs faced off, UW tied and then won game two. Now, since that series, a lot has happened and a lot has changed. And in the eyes of a few Badgers, the biggest growth has come off the ice. A lot of the growth has come off the ice. I think we have a lot of young players that have had to learn how to step into big roles. Um, and then we've also had upperclassmen that have had to figure out how to lead a little better. And I think right now we're just getting into that groove and we're figuring out who we are. We're accepting the challenges in front of us and if we're going to do it, it's going to be with the people in our locker room. Their next challenge does begin on Friday night in Minneapolis with puck drop at 6. And the Bucks on the West Coast for a three-game road trip. And with last night being a late tip, here's how their game with the Trailblazers went. Brooke Lopez established his presence early. He had 17 first-half points, and that gave the Deer a double-digit lead at halftime. He ended the night with 27. As Giannis added 24, the Bucks with a wire-to-wire -wire win, and it makes it eight straight. They head to L.A. next, and they're going to face the Lakers on Thursday. Let's get to Gary. Quick final recap. Yeah, quiet weather for tonight and tomorrow, but a winter storm possible later tomorrow night into Thursday and alert day for snow, freezing rain, and some sleep. All right, Katie, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. Have a great night, everybody. Hope to see you back here tonight at 10.